Welcome back. Cuba saw its largest protest in decades recently, with thousands of people demonstrating in major cities with signs saying freedom and enough. The Cubans are protesting against deteriorating living conditions, short shortages of food and essential medicines, and the government's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Knowing what conditions were like decades ago, you see why these protests are such a rare moment for the communist country. ClickOrlando.com's Brianna Bowles is here now to explain why these recent protests matter and what it means for the island. Well, Julie, to understand what a big deal these protests are now, we have to go back to 1959 when Cuba entered a new era with Fidel Castro. The Castro regime started with arrests, acts of torture, and executions against anyone who supported the former overthrown president or openly opposed the new one. The country's new leader paused elections indefinitely and dissolved the capitalist system in Cuba. Castro established a centrally planned economy, meaning Cuba would decide when and how many goods could be sold. It also meant families were limited on what they could purchase. Historians say decades of oppression took a toll on the island's residents, with people opting to leave if they had the option. Now, we mentioned some of the key issues factoring into these protests. So first, food, medical care, and human rights. To note, the country's decline in food and medical care started years ago. Shipping delays due to the pandemic and global shortages have only made it worse. And imports are becoming more scarce due to economic fallout from the pandemic and trade embargoes. Now that brings us to the next key issue, and that is Cuba's economy. Tourism was once one of the main sources of revenue for the island. In 2019, it earned around $4.1 billion from tourist visits. But by the end of December 2020, Cuba had experienced a nearly 75% drop in international visitors compared to those who came in 2019. Now, this drop is not only a result of Cuba closing its borders, but also due to restrictions imposed by other countries working to keep COVID-19 infections under control right now. And the last key issue fueling these protests that we'll mention is a new generation. More than 11 million people call Cuba home. The median age of the country's residents is 42 years old, meaning many were not alive during the Cuban Revolution or when Fidel Castro implemented his regime in 1959. So for context, this means that most of the island's residents have only known trade sanctions, scarcity, authoritarian rule, and what some call oppression. It's a new generation experiencing what historians may call old Cuba. As the residents have seen three different leaders gained access to cell phones and utilized limited access to the internet, there is just a different level of awareness now. To read up on all the factors influencing the Cuba protests and our continuing coverage on local impacts, just head to clickorlando.com. And really fast, ladies, I just want to give a shout out to Gabby Nunez because she did do all that research for this complex story and put it together in a way that was very easy to understand. So you can give a closer look on clickorlando.com.